Hi, everyone. My name Hello, is Hello, everyone. Martinez. I'm here with Mariette. Everyone, hi. Hi, thank you for being here. Yes, yes. So, Tony Martinez, Latino tax pro, Mariette Martinez, uh, with two stress maestras. Uh, last, same last names. Are we related? Me oh, I know. I, I forget <laughs> about that sometimes, Tony. Well, I think we are related at heart. Somos Latino. And we both have a huge passion to enrich the lives of business owners and the professionals that serve them and the Latino community. So I would say you're definitely my brother in heart. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we always hang out together. So yeah. and pura familia, right? Puro familia. Sí. No, I love it. So um, today's webinar is the English version of the one we had earlier. Yes. And it's how does the bookkeeper of the now operate? Exciting. Yes. Um, the Tu Stres Maestras was live last year at Latino Tax Fest, gave this presentation in person. Uh, how was that experience, Maria, last year? Giving this yeah, it was amazing. And if you guys see me looking down on my phone, I'm not being rude. I just don't want to ignore the Facebook audience because this is being uh, streamed to Facebook Live. So we want to make sure to answer everyone's questions, both you here at the attendees, which thank you for joining the Zoom and and registering and being part of the actual live Zoom meeting. But we also know there's streaming here live on Facebook. So if you have questions, we'll try to take moments here and there to answer them. So um, yes, honestly, you know, I still get a little like, you know, uh, uh, butterflies and the, the goosebumps when I think about Latino Tax Fest 2018. So I have been going for a few years now. I'm a big supporter of the Latino community and of Latino tax pros, but 18 was when uh, Latino tax pros brought us in as instructors, which was very exciting. Um, and honestly, I think what I got, I took back most was the absolute gratitude of this, of this community, um, that they finally were getting content that they've been wanting and asking and hoping for, and they were incredibly grateful for it. So, you know, as an instructor, it's already rewarding to be able to provide value and, and share our knowledge. And we don't always expect people to come back and thank you or hug you or kiss you, you know. Um, <laughs> but again, it is, there are, you guys are Latinos. So it makes sense that many of you were just overly grateful and you weren't afraid to show it. I mean, we even had some people tearing up and uh, sharing their personal stories. So it was pretty uh, absolutely amazing. No, awesome, awesome. And I know you guys will be back again this summer yes. at the Tax Fest with more content. But today's, today's presentation um, yes. looks exciting. Uh, what, what should people expect? Yeah, let's go into it. So basically, you know, what we want to, we really want to go ahead and first of all, we want to do two things. So two big objectives. The first one is if you did not experience to Tres Maestras at Latino Tax Fest 2018, we will be there in 19, but we're actually going to do a very short version of what we talked about in 18, because this is really the launch pad and the cornerstones of what we're going to be partnering with Latino Tax Pros about. So we really, if you weren't part of the launch yesterday, we had a launch, woo! We had like, you know, we had streamers and the whole thing yesterday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we're celebrating the fact that Latino Tax Pros and Tisa Mesas are partnering up to provide accounting technology, small business financials, um, uh, small business bookkeeping uh, classes to the Latino tax professional community. And for that matter, for anyone that wants to learn, right? Bookkeepers, accountants, small business owners. And so, um, but we really want to make sure everybody is on the same playing field. And when we say that, we want to make sure that you know that when you're learning from Tres Maestras or even from Latino tax pros or these new online platforms or education platforms that want you to accelerate, we also want to let you know what was, you know, what did our industry look like maybe 10 years ago and what does it look like today? It's so important to set the stage of where we're at so we can stay relevant in our industry. And so that's really what the bookkeeper of the now is, is to know how the bookkeeper and the accounting professional operates now. And you can also, if you're a tax professional, this is also how we operate now. Those of us that have gone ahead and got accelerated our learning, we've gotten certifications, we've embraced technology, and we wanna make sure we still have jobs in 10 years, right? Yeah, we want to make yeah. sure that automation and the machines, los maquinas, don't take us over, right? And so that's what the bookkeeper of the now is really about. Exciting, exciting. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Whenever you're ready, let's dive right in. All right, let's do it. Okay, so uh, just a, a few things here, just some logistics. Again, 
thankful for being here. Grateful for all of you that are here live or watching live. Thankful to Latino Tax Pros for having us. So we are Tus Tres Maestras. We're three Latina entrepreneurs that have gotten together and really seen the importance of creating financial awareness, providing financial education, and teaching you the solutions that allow you to work smarter, not harder, and accelerate your growth. We're Tus Tres Maestras. There's three of us, Vanessa Campo, Carmen Manrique, Maria Martinez, and we will be providing several learning opportunities for you this year and in the future. You can find us on social and at tustresmaestres.com. Um, well, again, what we want to cover today really is who is the bookkeeper now? But we have to remember, and I don't want anyone to feel offended by this conversation, you may be the bookkeeper of the then, but you need to hurry up and become a bookkeeper of the now because this has already happened. This is the present. So if you are in the past, we're encouraging you to step into the present so you can stay relevant. And as I mentioned before, so you can continuously be able to provide a, a living for yourself and for your family. So what is happening right now? Then we're going to go a little bit into a couple of really important topics that we're going to be teaching all of you in the very near future. So we're going to have two very big series coming up very soon. Um, Tuces Maestras is going to up north to Salinas, California to the headquarters and we're going to teach a financial literacy class up there. And then the week after in May, we're starting our six part launch, which is basically going to be how to create small business success for your practice and for your, for your clients. And so I'm going to be covering two of the topics that are going to be part of the six part series. And so, um, and then we're going to open it up for questions. So, you know, we really want to make sure that you get what I'm saying, that you're excited, that you're passionate, that you want to go ahead and accelerate your growth. So if you have any questions around that or around what Latino tax pros and two messages are doing together, please ask your questions. That's why we're here for you today. Okay. So the bookkeeper then and now. So, you know, we'd like to play a little bit around with what's been going on. You know, it's kind of silly, but honestly, you know, what's been going on and what's happened from, let's say, you know, 10 years and in the past was the typical bookkeeping and accounting professional, right? You know, with papers and with shoe boxes and with, you know, uh, pa the, the brown paper bags, if you can find them, right? And they basically are just throwing the, the receipts in there. You know, the small business owner is throwing the receipts in there and they're handing them over to the bookkeeper and saying, can you prepare my books for me? <laughs> right? And so, you know, the bookkeeper has worked in that type of environment for many years. This is not new. This is how it's been. My mom owned a chain of restaurants for 30 years from the 70s to the 90s. And this is how she ran her business, right? Papelitos, right? Those that speak Spanish and those papeles. And so, but what happened is that over these last 34 years, we've had something amazing happen. And that's the cloud. That's technology. That's an accelerated uh, ecosystem of, of automation and machine learning and, you know, all of these opportunities for us to take those papeles, take those papers and turn them into electronic documentation. Because as turn as we t turn the paper into something that's electronic, not only do we have more efficiency, but that data can run more magically into our accounting programs. Because now it's data management instead of paper management. We're not managing papers, we're managing data. And so that is the big thing that happened on the bookkeeping and the accounting and the technology side. Now what's happening unfortunately, that it hasn't happened as quick on the tax side. And so when you have your bookkeepers talking to your tax preparers about using data and, and using QuickBooks Online and online electronic solution and using apps and I want everything to be in electronic format, the tax preparers are like, what are you talking about? I still use forms. I still use the folders, right? The folders with all the papers inside. So what are you talking about? All of this electronic and the cloud and QuickBooks Online. And so we need to bridge that gap. We need to bridge the gap between the tax repair and the bookkeeper because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are on the same team. And guess whose team you're on? You're on the small business owner's team. That is the team that you're on. And if you guys are not talking to each other and working together, then you are on the wrong team and you're doing a complete disservice to your small business owners. So we all gotta get on the right team. We all gotta be on the same team and not once a year, and not twice a year, 
all year round. And that's what this is about. So these are just a couple of you know, areas that truly have significantly changed between the bookkeeper of you know, then and the bookkeeper of now. Before, bookkeepers and accountants and even tax professionals in the past, they would work in their own little world, right? They would get a client and it's just you and the client and you guys would just work alone. You know, you'd have to go to the client's office and work in the little cubicle behind the desk. Um, and then eventually, you know, you would go ahead and tell your client to send that paperwork or to send that backup file to the tax repair. But why is the business owner sending the backup to the tax repair? Why isn't the bookkeeper and the tax repair working together alongside each other the whole time? What is the disconnection about? And so now we have what's called a collaborative team. We all work together. There's three of us, the key people, the accountant or bookkeeper, the tax repair, and the small business owner. And we're all together collaboratively trying to reach business success. So that's the then and the now. Also, back in the day, right? Again, we're going maybe five, 10 years ago. You're always trying to pace yourself. You're always playing catch up. You're always late. You're always barely making the time, barely making the deadline. There's no reason for that now because with automation and with this accelerated opportunity to do data management instead of paper management, now you can plan for things. Now you can prepare for things. So now you take your business from reactive to proactive. And remember, reactive is you're reacting to all of the emergencies. Proactive is that you're stating, I'm a professional. I'm a professional and I want to look forward to your future. I want to talk about your goals and your dreams. That's why I always say that today's bookkeeper is in the dream fulfillment business. We're fulfilling dreams, right? And so that's this whole different idea of where we were then versus where we are now. And these are all topics that we actually will be covering in our series in May. Um, which is called Grow Your, uh, Your Tax Practice with uh, Small Business Accounting. But we just wanted, again, make sure that you understand some of these topics because we're going to go heavy into them very soon with all of you. Um, something else that, of course, many of us know is the resistance to technology. A lot of people are resistant to technology, but you don't have to be anymore because there's security, there's encryption. I mean, this is not new stuff, ladies and gentlemen. This has been happening now for years and we need a jump on board. We need to go and you know, a lot of us, if you've ever heard of the adoption curve, it's basically a curve that tells you where are you? Are you a lagger? Are you all the way in the back and it's hard for you to adopt? Or are you one of the innovators and the early adopters where you're excited to stay relevant in your industry? We need to find that happy medium. We need to find that happy medium. Maybe, maybe we're a lagger, and overnight, we're not going to become an early adopter because that's scary because we're still a little bit risk averse. But why don't you be one of the people in the middle? Why don't you go ahead and adopt to these things like slowly, but already get on that train? Don't be the one that's late to the train because you're the ones that are in more risk of losing your profession. Okay. And that's what this profession is all about. So we're going to quickly cover the learning the books to tax life cycle. But before we do, do we have any, any uh, thoughts and feedback of what we're talking about here, Tony? Yeah, we have some uh, people tagging others saying, thank you. Let's see on the Q and a here. Uh, we don't have tax preparer background. Is it okay to do bookkeeping for a client? So that's kind of, I don't know. Do you want to answer some questions now? Uh, Maria? Well, yeah, I'll just do one. That's a really good one. And I appreciate that. And this is something we actually covered yesterday when we did our launch. This is a safe place, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very safe place. And obviously it's going to be much safer when you're in the series with us because it's going to be a private, you know, training and it's going to be a closed training. And we're going to be able to ask some questions that maybe you are, you know, afraid to ask or, or you know, vulnerable, embarrassed to ask. But I am well aware that there are many people that are in the tax industry that don't do bookkeeping, but they prepare taxes for small business owners. Mm -hmm. I'm also aware there's a lot of people in the bookkeeping industry that actually do small business accounting and they've never been educated in accounting. Like, let's just put that out on the table. Okay. So now that we have that out, elephant is in the room and it's been let out, right? <laughs> yeah. You all can do everything. 
You like a tax preparer can do bookkeeping. A bookkeeper can do taxes. What do you need though? You need the education, right, Tony? I mean, that's yeah. what you need. Yeah. That, Tony is in the education business, right? And yeah. so you, you, of course, you guys can serve bookkeeping clients. Now to best serve bookkeeping clients, you need the education. And that's basically what Tony and I are working together to do. Okay? Yes. All right. So learning the books to tax life cycle. So this is just something that the Tus Tres Maestros we've actually created. And we actually created it for, um, well, actually, there's a couple stories behind it. And you'll learn more about it in our series. But essentially, I built this all out because of the fact that I built a really cool series. I'm a trainer writer for the Intuit Trainer Writer Network. So you may have heard me train on some of the webinars or live at conferences. And I was trying to teach our community, our accounting, bookkeeping, and tax community, that if you learn the full life cycle of a small business, which we call the small business accounting workflow, if you learn the full cycle, if you basically close that gap, then you can decide on what you want to do and what you do best. But what you cannot do is make any decisions on bookkeeping or on taxes for a small business owner if you don't know the full life cycle, right? You need to know all parts, and then after that, you can take the pieces that you want, okay? And so this books to tax life cycle is basically your pastel. It's your pizza, it's your cake, and you can have as much cake as you want. I mean, <laughs> honestly, you know, I have a video out there that I did with Intuit, but I always laugh because I basically said, Oh, I love pie and I'm going to eat all the pie. You know what I mean? Like, it's true. You can choose how much pie you want. You can choose how much you want to eat it, right? And so here is what we call the books to tax life cycle. And this is the full accounting life of a small business owner. First, they got to manage their books, okay? Then they got to balance their books. They have to reconcile and make sure they didn't miss anything. They need to match the bank account with the general ledger, which is the books, and they got to make sure nothing is missing. Then they need to maintain the books. Why? Because what gets maintained and managed grows, thrives, succeeds. But if you don't measure your performance, you cannot grow, right? You, can't, you don't know if you're going up or down or sideways. And so you have to maintain this momentum of managing your books so that way you can measure your performance and see which way to continue. Where do I go next? That's what maintaining the books is. And then every single year, based on your fiscal year, so whether you end at 1231 or you end on a different date, every single business ends, just so you all know. Every single business has an ending life cycle of the year. Fiscal means it's not 1231, and if your calendar, it means it's 1231. That's the only difference, keep it simple. If you're a calendar year business owner, then you end at 1231. So December 31st of that year, you have to close your books. You got to put the, the, the nice little red bow on it. And then you start the next year. That's it. That's the life cycle. It's that simple. Now, of course, it's not that simple. <laughs> okay. We're going to teach you all the pieces of what's in that. But to keep it very simple, that's what we call the books to tax life cycle. And then this is something that we also created because we want you to know what does it mean to take some of those pieces of that pie and to decide on how you want to be successful in your business. So there's some bookkeepers that say, well, I only want to do the accounting part. I don't want to do the tax part. I understand the tax part now. I understand that you got to complete the books. You got to complete the accounting because I have to report it on the tax return. I understand that, but I don't want to do taxes. Okay. So then the bookkeeper has to go ahead and still be responsible for their role. Well, what kind of roles would they have? Well, they need to manage accounting, right? They need to balance those books. They need to maintain the books. So what? So they can measure them and evaluate how the business is doing. They need to go ahead and do a financial review, maybe on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, definitely on an annual basis. And they also need to make sure that their business owners are still being compliant. Even if you're not a tax preparer, you still need to make sure that your clients are compliant. They're paying their sales taxes, they're paying their income taxes, they're paying their payroll taxes. And so the bookkeepers have a very important role, okay? The accounting professional, the bookkeeping professional has a very 
critical role in small business success. Now we have our tax professional. And let's say we have a tax professional that doesn't want to do the bookkeeping. Okay, but do you have to know the bookkeeping? Yes. I mean, if anybody tells you different, I'm sorry. They're telling you a big fat lie. If you are going to prepare small business tax returns, you have to understand the small business accounting behind it because you have an even more important role because you're reporting the numbers to the government, el gobierno, right? And so your role is critical to the small business success. So you want to make sure to review the accounting. You want to make sure it makes sense. You want to make sure that the quarterlies look good because you're going to help them file their estimated taxes. You want to make sure they're compliant, of course, so they're filing their estimated taxes, they're filing their annual taxes, any other requirements that they need. Um, and then many times, some tax professionals can even get into the part of tax consulting. So they could talk about tax planning and tax strategies and what is the best entity. I know uh, lately, um, Tony's been bringing in a lot of specialists talking about becoming corporation, right, Tony? That's like the big thing right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so who is the best business type and when are they ready to transition to be an S corp or a partnership or a C corp? And so many times tax preparers, tax professionals can get into this area because they really understand the tax code and the tax forms. You know, in my case, I'm a hybrid. So I've been in accounting, tax, and technology for over 20 years. I'm both a financial and tax accountant. I'm also an enrolled agent, but I'm also an accounting technology specialist. I know all of it, so I, but I don't do all of it, just so you know. <laughs> I don't do all of it because it's too much. And so what happens when the bookkeeper and the tax professional get together? What happens? Success. Success happens. You can start talking about how to grow profit, how to grow their team, how to save, how to be more strategic on taxes, how to plan, right? How to, how to do all these amazing things that most of us don't have time to do because we try to sit in our own little world and do it all ourselves. That's why, again, the new bookkeeper and the new tax repair are collaborative. They work together so that way they can be successful and that way their client could be successful. And that's really what this is about. And so what is the roadmap? What is the roadmap to go ahead and implement bookkeeping into your, into your practice if that's something that you wanna do? So here it is. And this is something that Tuces Maya says, and I also was giving um, uh, Tony some props. This is something that's really important to us. We like to keep things real simple. Right? Mm -hmm. When we overcomplicate things, it's like, I gotta do all that. So we're gonna keep things simple. Of course, always make the assumption that there's more work to do. There's a lot of effort involved in wanting to you know, implement anything new and accelerate your growth. But you also wanna keep it simple so that way you have smaller goals and smaller stones to push than the, to put too much pressure on yourself. So we always like to do things in threes. You're gonna see that a lot. With Dutres Maestas, we'll always say, you know, step three or, or five steps because we want to give you the actual actionable steps on how to do something. So here are the three steps to implement bookkeeping into your practice. Number one, you need to grow. I said that from the very beginning. You need to develop your skills. You need to be able to feel you're worth it. So that way, when you go out and tell your client, hey, guess what? I just got, I took this class. I just accelerated made a growth. I learned all about small business financial statements. Now I'm going to provide you additional value. And what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? You got to charge more, right? If you're going to bring value to the table, you need a price on your value, right? And so as you grow and you develop your skills and you get trained and you get certified, everybody wins. The small business owner wins because they have a more professional, qualified person serving them. And you win because you're going to be able to value yourself more as well. Expand. So you can decide now with this additional learning, do you wanna get more clients? Do you wanna specialize in a specific client, right? Again, establishing that value in a specific niche. So those of you, you may have heard the comment or the saying, the riches are in the niches. Because as you get more specialized and more narrow, you really can provide value to that industry, okay? All of this has to do with you also getting your stuff together, right? GTD, get it done. Get it together. And so you got to get organized. If you're going to grow, you need to actually first grow yourself and then grow your business. So you got to stay organized. 
And then last but not least, and you're all doing it here today live, you need to partner. You need to partner with the, the, the partners and the organizations and the peers and the colleagues and the community that's gonna allow you to develop these skills, that's gonna allow you to grow your following, that's gonna allow you to grow your business. So find those partners and connect. It's not gonna happen behind your desk. It's not gonna happen behind a pile of paperwork. You need to get out and you need to connect. All right. So here's just a nice little saying, all you need is the plan, the roadmap, and the courage to press on into your destination. So really what we're saying here is that you all can do it. You really can. Nobody does not have this opportunity. So if anyone's ever told you, you can't do that, you need to just tell them to cut it out and you need to just say, of course I can do it. Is it gonna take work? Is it gonna take education? Is it gonna take me organizing myself and finding the right partner to get there? Yes, yes, yes. But can you do it? Absolutely yes. Okay, so next step, we already told you, you know, get educated, you continuously automate, grow, accelerate, be okay with being relevant, and being relevant means you're gonna have to embrace technology, you're gonna have to embrace going from the then to the now, and we're gonna teach all of this in our series that's coming up in May. So let me talk to you a little bit about the series, but before I do, anything I wanna go ahead and, uh, an answer or anything that I want to kind of go and stress a little bit more based on all of that stuff I just shared right now, Tony? Yeah, no, uh, just a comment uh, from one of the attendees. Uh, it says, I actually did uh, get my bookkeeping certificate first, then I started doing taxes. So mm -hmm. it is possible. Yes. So that's good. Uh, that, and then another comment, um, are the slides available for download? And at right now in a bit, Mariette will show you the link you need to go to uh type in your information and then you'll get the, the slides because absolutely you yes 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 thank you for that i mean how about, have you been monitoring facebook are we going on facebook too yeah oh yeah yeah for sure i'll, I'll put the link on um uh, both facebook and the zoom yeah, um so people perfect. can have access to them but any, anybody out there please submit your questions this is an open dialogue so yes yes if you're on if you're on facebook and you're watching feel free to submit questions and also when i share where to, con to connect with us, you can obviously use the same way to connect with us as well. Um, but everybody that's registered and that attended this actual Zoom will definitely get a follow-up email with everything that I shared today. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you a little bit about our roadmap to grow your practice. Um, and so what you're gonna be learning, we just wanna make sure you're aware of what you're gonna be learning. This is uh, kind of a repeat of what we talked about yesterday when we had our launch. But essentially, we want to first really focus on creating a high-performance business. So something that's going to be very different that we're going to do than other, you know, learning series that I've attended, you know, a lot of times is you get the content and this is what you need to learn and this is how you're going to learn it and this is what you need to do. But we're actually going to start with going inwards. We want to make sure you're ready because everybody on this call and everybody that's going to attend these learning series you are all serving business owners or you're serving customers. So if you're a small business owner, you're serving customers. If you are an accounting, bookkeeping, or tax professional, which is our, you know, our target market for this series, you are actually serving clients, right? But you're still an entrepreneur. We're all entrepreneurs here, right? And so we got to make sure we got the mindset for it. We need to go and spend one hour and revisit the fact that we want to be high performance. We want to have self-worth. We want to make sure that we got our business in order, right? What they say, you know, get your stuff in order before you serve somebody else. And so we're going to focus on that on the first day. The second day is going to be about reaching financial success. What have been the pitfalls? Why is there such a staggering statistic that says that after seven years, only two out of 10 businesses are still surviving? Why is that? It's crazy, right? And so we got to figure out, and after five years, only half of businesses that started are surviving. Why is that statistic so staggering? So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to go ahead and tell you that the solution, believe it or not, it's not that scary, and it's not that difficult. It's financial literacy. That's it. We need to make sure everybody is prepared financially, mentally, holistically, spiritually to be an entrepreneur so that way they can go ahead and either learn the stuff or partner with people that can teach them the stuff. That's it. 
I know because my mom, after 30 years, she closed her doors. And when I asked her mom, what happened? And she said, mija, I just didn't know. I didn't have the education. That's what it was. And so we want to make sure that we all are on the same playing field and we all have financial literacy. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the new accounting technology bookkeeper and tax professional. And that's the new professional that is embracing technology. They're jumping on the technology train, right? They're not scared of the machines. They're okay with the fact that automation and machine learning and all of the opportunities for you to work smarter is going to help them. It's not going to hurt them. And that's what we're gonna cover in part three and part four. First, we're gonna introduce you to technology, and then we're gonna focus on the actual accounting solution that Des Maestas specifically support, and that's our QuickBooks solution. So we have taken the, this made the decision after using many different accounting softwares over the last 20 years. We wanted to focus on one software so that way we could be experts in that software, and that's QuickBooks, and that's what we're gonna teach you. And we're gonna teach you the online version, not the desktop version, why? Because the three of us believe that you can use this online version and then expand it with apps if you have a more, more complex client or if you're a more complex client. But being able to use an online secure application allows you to have what? Flexibility. Anytime, anywhere. And so that's why we're very big advocates of online. And then we're going to take it all back and we're going to teach you every task that's involved in that life cycle I just taught you. So we're gonna take that nice, beautiful circle, but we're gonna take it apart. And we're gonna teach you every part of it. And that's gonna be what we call the small business accounting workflow, where we're gonna take pieces of that book, the tax life cycle, and talk to you about what's involved in each one of those pieces. And then at the very end, we're gonna show you how you take all of this to be able to measure your business by looking at financial statements. So three key financial statements the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. We're gonna teach you how to read those statements and how to create accurate and complete financials so that way you can complete the life cycle, which is taking your, your client or yourself from the books to the tax return. And that's why we call it books to tax. And all of that is gonna be taught in our series. And so, let me just go ahead and end and show you how to go ahead and access uh, the series and learn more. If you go to our website, to stressmaestas.com, you're gonna go ahead and see it says new launch. You can click on new launch and you're gonna be able to, um, let me just get there real quick. And you're gonna go ahead and see that we're gonna have a reference of all the courses. Uh, pretty much everything I shared with you is here for you. You can open up every single one of our days because it's six days and you're going to have a detailed uh, agenda of every day. And you're also going to be able to click on the registration page and the registration page actually takes you to the Latino Tax Pros website because for this particular series, we are very excited to partner with Latino Tax Pros. And so that's where you're going to go ahead and do two very important things. The first thing we really want you to do, if you're interested, if interested to learn more, that's it. Please fill out this form because then you're going to go ahead and get an email from us with more details. Um, if you want a phone call, you'll respond back to us and say, you know what, I'd love a phone call so you can explain to me a little bit better. And so all of that communication starts by you filling out the form. So just go ahead and fill out the form. And again, right here essentially is the same information that's on our page with the uh, agenda. And then also right here, you're going to see something that is the best part of this whole series is that we are gonna be teaching this concurrently in English and Spanish. So what does that mean? That means when we start our launch in May, every other day is going to be in a different language. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, English, English. Tuesday, Thursday, Espanol, Spanish. So we're bringing it on, ladies and gentlemen. We're not holding back. We're gonna bring it in and we're gonna bring it on and we're gonna bring it on for all English and Spanish speakers. And so basically, again, I just wanna make sure I show that to you one more time because this is really important, how you can move forward if you're interested in this, is you wanna visit tustresmaestras.com, tustresmaestras.com. And again, we'll put that in the link as well. Um, and then once you get to tustresmaestras.com, you wanna click on the new launch. The new launch is gonna take you to our page where you can essentially read everything that I just said. 
and then you want to click through to the uh, the Latino Tax Pros page, and that's where you're going to fill out the form to connect with us and just let us know that you want to learn some more, and then we're going to start the communication right there. Um, this starts in May, so we're about what like six weeks away, um, yeah. and we're super excited. We're not sure if we're going to top out and max it at a certain amount of registrants. But so far, we've been getting a lot, a lot of interest, so we're super excited. So that's pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I know um, that's May 6th and on, but on April 29th, yes. you guys will be here at our office in Salinas offering a class in person, right? Yes, and I'm, I'm assuming if I click on here where it says live corporation class, is it going to take me to that? Let's see. Yeah, let's, let's click it. Let's check it out. Yeah, there, there it is. is. There it is. So, yeah, something that's also very exciting is a week before this big launch, uh, myself and Carmen Marique, so two out of the three Tres Maestas, we're going to fly up to Salinas and we're going to teach you financial literacy. So, like a real short version of the importance of what you need to know on the financial statements and then how you push the financial data from the books using QuickBooks to the tax return. And once it gets to the tax return, so let's say you know you have a QuickBooks client and it goes from QuickBooks to an 1120S or QuickBooks to a 1065 for a partnership. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand it off to Latino tax pros where they're gonna teach you how to prepare those business tax returns. Nice, nice, yeah. yeah. It's three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. The first day is the bookkeeping, but then we go into how to fill out form 1065, form 1120. 1120s three days and then that thursday of that week thursday may 2nd uh, we'll be having a live instructor training for any of those any of you that are looking to start a tax school and oh, very tax cool. classes uh, that that evening of may 2nd we're also having our open house the open house it's a big mixer people customers partners friends they come on by we bring a taco truck and wow <laughs> man now i'm wanting to stay longer and i know you're doing all that fun stuff it's a whole week of uh of, of training and also uh fun and networking that's what it's that all sounds about sounds like a lot of fun well well you know i'm a mommypreneur so i can only stay that one day i gotta fly back home to my three babies but have fun with me have a few margaritas a few tacos um, I'll be there in spirit, in spirito. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. No, well, thank you, uh, Maria. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions here. Um, I don't see any. Just a lot of good comments. Like, thank you for the info. I look forward to it. I uh, plan on taking the, the class. Um, so if you do have any questions, again, everyone, go ahead, um, click on the link, uh, send us your info, and we're here to help. And we want to make sure you are ready to serve small business clients, yes, whether it's absolutely. with the tax return or the bookkeeping. Uh, there's also payroll. I mean, there's so, so uh, around the small business client. There, there, there's so many different aspects, and and that's the future, the way we see it. Or that's now. Like if you're yeah, not that's serving, now. These, yeah, yeah. If you're not I serving, think that's really important, Tony. That we and that's why we call it that. Every, you know, uh, I don't know if you follow like what a lot of the big industry leaders, like the Intuits and the Zeros of the world, they would call it the firm of the future, or the bookkeeper of the future, or the tax preparer of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the future. That's now, that's today. And if you don't pick up on it now, it's actually the past. So we want to make sure you're present and that you're taking advantage of it. And again, that's why we're incredibly grateful for our partnership with Latino Tax Pros because we want you all to have a piece of this pie. And that's what we're here for. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Tony, for having me. Again, don't forget, go to justesmaestas.com. You can go ahead and read everything that I covered. And then when you're ready, you want to click over to the Latino Tax Pros page and you want to fill that up for more information. And of course, also click on the corporation class if you can make it to the one up in Salinas. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you soon. This webinar is being recorded. It'll be on YouTube. It's, and it'll, it'll sit on Facebook also. Have a good uh, rest of the week and happy tax season, everybody. Oh, and don't forget to file your extensions or your returns tomorrow. Business returns, talking about business returns. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> the 15th, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. <laughs> I know, we get so busy. So anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for being here. I'll see you all soon. Bye, everybody. Have a good Bye. one. Bye.